there's so much Tesla news going on, you will want to watch this episode. And there's something strange going on with Tesla. If you read this headline, I'm going to go through that. And there's some really good news coming from China. 475,000 deliveries are now likely based on James' estimate. The quarter is now 20% up year over year or 43% up quarter over quarter in China. This is great. So click the like button because today it is a green day. There are also some blatantly misleading headlines like this. Tesla cuts base Cybertruck trim, raises prices by $20,000. They made it sound like Tesla killed the non-foundation series Cybertruck in the headline. But all that is happening is Tesla is just making the foundation series Cybertrucks available to everyone to order right now. And West from Tesla did confirm that Tesla did not cancel the rear-wheel drive Cybertruck. It will be made. But the Tesla bears are running with this <laughs> headline as if the Cybertruck truck base version has been canceled completely and if you don't follow tesla super actively you will read this headline and you will think that there's something seriously strange going on with tesla anyone with one hundred thousand dollars can get a Cybertruck now despite tesla's one million reservations at first i saw this headline and i thought <laughs> Fred Lambert from Electric is really going hard with clickbait here, but then I read the whole thing and I realized, um, based on what he believes, this is not clickbait to him. But to me, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm strongly disagreeing with what he's saying here. But I haven't seen such a strong reaction from Tesla investors about what Electric wrote in a long while. Alex is calling it trash. Brian is calling it rage bait. But Brian seems to not have read the article and he says he will no longer be citing Electric as a source moving forward. Brian hasn't read the article, so I can see why he would say that. By the way, when you look at Electric, you have to separate Fred from all other reporters because Fred very openly criticizes Elon Musk personally, but all the reporters, I haven't really seen them do that. Although all the reporters from Electric are not as popular, so maybe I just missed them. But Fred here writes, I wouldn't be surprised if only about 5% of US reservation holders ended up going through with their Cybertruck orders. Many Tesla fans try to counter with the fact that only the Foundation series is available and that cheaper versions of the Cybertruck are not yet available. But the Cybertruck tallies all pointed to the vast majority of reservation holders going for the dual motor version, which is available. The Foundation Series does add $20,000 to the price, but it also offers a discount on options and accessories. I wouldn't be shocked if removing the Foundation Series, which is likely to happen in the next few days, only convinces another 10% of Cybertruck reservation holders in the US. So I can see how Fred would write this headline. I think it's okay to publish this because he believes that people that reserve the non-Foundation Cybertruck vehicles are just not going to convert at all. But this is where I start to seriously, very strongly push against Fred here. He writes, last week we reported that Tesla was starting to invite Cybertruck reservation holders who reserved the truck just a few weeks prior. That was somewhat surprising considering that Tesla claimed to have over 1 million reservations for the Cybertruck, but it is estimated to have delivered only about 25,000 of them so far. But Fred must have totally missed what Elon said here in June. We will land the Foundation Series actually pretty soon and the non-Foundation series sometime next quarter and that non-foundation series Sabadra should start sometime in the third quarter which is right now right now is already sometime in that third quarter so if Elon Musk has already told us what Tesla is going to do how can we be surprised when we see Tesla doing exactly that so what was surprising to Fred in a negative way to me it's actually exciting because it means we are getting to real scale for the Cybertruck now to me it's a bit hard hard to believe that Fred, to the best of my knowledge, at least as of a month or two ago, still owns Tesla stock, and yet he's putting out such bearish stories about Tesla. If he actually believes what he wrote here, I think he should sell Tesla stock because that sounds quite bearish. Although from what I understand, from what he says publicly, he cares more about the environment than his investments. So I guess in that sense, it sort of makes sense. But today, Electric is becoming a publication that gives you insight into how the bears are thinking and it's doing this job very well. So is there something seriously strange going on with Tesla's reservation list here? I have a few people that I know of that have Cybertruck reservations, they didn't even consider the thought of owning a foundation series Cybertruck because they don't need the extra luxury and all of these extra options. And on top of that, 
they think that if they are the first ones to get it the build quality is not going to be good so a lot of these people that i know they actually don't mind waiting a little bit more to get a vehicle that will not have any major defects or not necessarily even major defects but just you know things that you would have to go to the service center for just to fix so at this point i am not worried at all about tesla's backlog here what will be interesting to watch is people's places in the queue based on their reservation number and when they start getting these non-foundation series albatrox if let's say someone who is in the spot number of 300,000 is getting a non-foundation series albatrox like a month after that's opened to deliveries uh, that is going to be a bit strange but i suspect if you don't have a cybertruck reservation and if you want to get one that's a non-foundation cybertruck and i'm not talking about one of the higher trims i think if you want to get a lower trim cybertruck you will still need to wait for a long time here's another indication that shows that there is good demand for cybertruck tesla has pushed back the start of production for the sixteen thousand dollar cybertruck range extender to early 2025 from late 20 24, the range extender will sit in the bed and is supposed to enable over 470 miles of range for certain trims. The reason why you would do that is mostly two reasons. Number one, either you're having some serious production issues, which I don't think Tesla is having because right now the Cybertruck is sort of flat in its production. And that's, I think, because the demand for the foundation series Cybertruck is now limited, which means they have the capacity to produce this, I believe, because you are not really that busy scaling up the Cybertruck itself anymore. Or, and this is, I think, the most likely explanation, for this is why would you want to make the product more complex if there's already so much demand for it just keep it simple just produce more simple versions of the product go through that first and then add more complexity to it this will also reduce any potential defects so as a customer if i order this i would definitely be a bit upset today but as an investor i actually see this as a positive unless you really believe that tesla is having some serious production issues and in that case i would not see this as good but right now i do i also see people saying things like this i honestly hold they scrap this option and just build it into the actual actual battery pack so many issues with adding a permanent battery pack extender to the bed of the truck but it's not really a permanent thing you can take it out if you want to overall this concludes everything pretty well the Cybertruck Foundation series was an opportunistic offering that Tesla made so people could pay more to be among the first to have a Cybertruck and skip the wait line Tesla has gone through the whole list offering the Cybertruck that was originally $50,000 for $100,000 99% refused as expected and now that there's no line for the Foundation series Tesla is asking anyone else final chance you can still get it if you want to if not uh, you may need to wait for a long 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 time so now tesla will lower the price once the foundation series is gone to eighty thousand dollars and it's actually going to be less than eighty thousand dollars because you're going to get the seventy five hundred dollar tax credit from the u.s government making it almost seventy thousand dollars so that's a thirty thousand dollar price cut almost so what Tesla is going to do now is it will go to the two motor variant and the people that order the one motor variant, they will need to wait until everyone is done with their two motor variants, which looking at the reservation list was the most popular option, by the way. But now the prices are a bit higher than originally announced during the Sabotruck and Veil event. So how will it convert is not exactly known. Maybe a lot of people that reserved the dual motor version will now want to switch to the single motor version. And I think this is somewhat reasonable to expect. Bradford thinks they may sell 200,000 Cybertrucks at $80,000 and then half of the remaining reservations should convert at $62,000. Now, if somehow, let's say the Cybertruck becomes a flop. Remember the Tesla and Elon Musk said that there was a plan to make a more regular looking pickup truck. But Tesla also has other businesses and this one really excites me, the mega pack business. Construction has just begun in Queen Queensland, Australia, on a new $750 million Tesla mega pack battery storage facility. <laughs> this is pretty big. This project marks the start of the transformation of the major coal center into a green energy hub. And this could turn out to be somewhat significant that representative from Tesla will reportedly meet with Malaysia's Ministry of Investment, Trade and Industry on August 22nd to discuss the company's investment plans in the country. I've been to Malaysia and it's one of my favorite countries in the world. So this to me is just a bit more interesting. But this quarter Tesla is doing so well in Asia and specifically in China. The Chinese number that just came out, it was actually so far the best week this quarter. And it's 
the third best week of 2024 to date and remember that the numbers get quite a bit better towards the end of the quarter usually and this is already the third best week for comparison in q2 around the same time in the quarter we only got 9800 deliveries and in the first quarter roughly same time only 5700 although you have to consider some chinese holidays but this number is really good i'm very happy about it there are no charts from roland today though he makes my favorite charts. If good numbers keep coming out of China, we will soon be the previous year's deliveries in China. You can see that the gap between the years has just been reduced by a little bit. We just went higher, meaning the gap is smaller. So I would definitely like to congratulate the Tesla team for doing a great job in China. I'm pretty sure that Tom Zhu being back in China is helping Tesla in China. Every Tesla stock investor is happy about this number today. Oh, and check this out. Tesla's Hollywood Diner gets the first job posting. They're seeking for a diner experience specialist. When it's open, I will go to California just to visit that diner probably at least once. However, I bet that the Tesla's Mega Pack factory in China is going to be finished and operating before this diner does. The discussion between Gary Black and Farzad continues here today. Gary says, I also believe Tesla Tesla will roll out its robotaxi platform one region at a time since in addition to regulatory approval they need infrastructure set up monitoring rescue to launch well technically it's always one market at a time it's just is it one new market almost every day or is it one new market once every quarter tesla right now is definitely working on rolling out a new fsd version there have been tesla vehicles spotted testing the chuck cook left turn and the rollout of 12.4 5.1.3 is continuing still only hardware for cars though and it's good to see this fsd performance from this tesla vehicle there's a clear green light for us actually right now and these two homeless guys are passing anyway but fsd stops knowing it should stop now let's check out a few highlights from the elon musk interview from yesterday specifically about tesla and what all this means for elon musk there was a massive attack on x yesterday which crashed the servers and at first the x spaces did not work at all elon also admitted that there were some unforced errors on x's side once the conversation started it actually kept going it didn't drop or anything like that so beginning the conversation was the hard part i wish this this was a video event but as far as i can tell elon and the former president they're not even in the same room anyway the former president did say you do make a great product i have to say i have to be honest with you that doesn't mean everybody should have an electric car but these are minor details but your product is incredible also electricity and the demand for electricity in the u.s was brought up by the former president and he basically said that we need to double our total electricity production in the u.s just for ai so so when next time you hear anyone say anything about electricity how come when it comes to ai no issue we do we need more electricity okay let's make more electricity but when it comes to electric vehicles all of a sudden some people say ah we cannot increase our electricity production but i hear zero push back against increasing electricity for ai and here's a relevant statement to us tesla stock investors from elon musk about sustainability it is something we need to move towards people can still have a stake can drive a gas car i don't think we should vilify people for it but i think we should generally lean in the direction of sustainability i think solar is going to be the majority of earth's energy generation in the future so you get the solar power and you combine that with batteries and you use that to charge the electric cars and you have a long-term sustainable solution that's what tesla is trying to move towards but when you look at our cars we don't believe that caring about the environment should mean that you have to suffer so we make sure that our cars are beautiful they drive well they are fast they're sexy i'm a big fan of let's have an inspiring future it was by far the most popular x spaces ever so far and combined views of the conversation <laughs> and subsequent discussion by other accounts now exceeds 1 billion during the conversation i didn't really hear anything that i thought would cause a major backlash against elon musk and so far all i'm seeing is just basically this the opposing side basically just says that Elon Musk is helping the former president not just by giving him money but by putting him on his platform but Elon invited 
the other side as well. But I really doubt we will see a space like that. There's also a letter sent by the European Commission to Elon Musk before the conversation happened and it, it was basically a threat. Careful what you say on during that interview or conversation because this will also be seen in the European Union. Hopefully they don't start going after Tesla. I don't think Elon Musk gave into any of these demands to censor any of the content for the European European Union countries. So I think this is something actually that we Tesla stock investors should pay attention to because if they start going after Elon more directly, it could hurt Tesla as well. They might think of something. Anyway, I'm not a big fan of the European Union trying to control the politics in the US. There are comments about that European politicians still not sure if theory is a man's name or a woman's name and that profile pic <laughs> doesn't clear it up either. Or Zad is glad it's not just him. What do you guys think? Male or female? Man or woman? I always thought he's a guy, but no one can tell me what a woman is, so I'm not so sure anymore. Elon Musk, by the way, personally responded to this letter by saying hello. But I believe that the official translation of what Elon Musk was trying to say here is um, grow food yourself. Right after seeing that letter, Elon Musk also posted this. The worst thing about censorship is... Hmm, well, I guess we'll never know. Elon is also making some funny meme posts. Elon also stated his beliefs about the climate change and CO2. He's more worried about CO2 emissions. Not so much because of global warming, but because if you keep increasing PPM of CO2, when it reaches over 1000, you start getting headaches and stuff like that. Currently, outdoor PPM is at about 420, Elon Musk is estimating. And in about 24 years, it has increased from 370 to about 420. So there is no major, major rush, but it's something that Elon Musk is worried about in the long term, 50, 100 years from, from now. But we can also plant trees. And I personally have planted hundreds of trees. I'm actually pretty familiar with the forestry industry. And check out what's happening here. The UAW today filed federal labor charges against Trump and Elon Musk due to something that was said during the last night's X spaces. At one point, the former president and Musk were talking about workers who go on strike for better wages. Then the former president said, if workers go on strike and you say that's okay, you're all gone, you're all gone. So everyone is gone. Elon Musk responds with the last two UAW presidents residents went to prison for bribery and corruption and based on recent news it looks like this guy will join them too if you missed the news. To me it sounds like being a leader of UAW is like getting a PhD in corruption. This is also really relevant to us Tesla stock investors. Elon Musk volunteered to help on a government efficiency committee to rein in government waste and spending and the former president would seem to be somewhat excited about that. He said oh you would love cutting and he made a few points about <laughs> how Elon Musk I think uh, laid out the whole supercharging team I think that's what he was referring to and yeah he, multiple times the former president said oh you would love cutting wouldn't you and Elon says here a tremendous amount of growth and opportunity would be created by deregulation and reduction of wasteful government spending it might look something like this if Elon does this job out 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 and out Elon is also saying and we will run out of oil and gas down the road so why run the CO2 experiment to extreme levels when need to solve sustainable energy anyway? However, the progress of sustainable energy production and consumption is tracking to solve global warming in time if we are not complacent. So we're all good. If you are a Tesla stock investor, you are contributing to solving this problem, by the way. So no matter what Tesla stock does, you know at least that you're doing a good thing in this regard. This is very good. Tesla is pushing really hard into improving service timelines. I've been seeing many 24-hour turnarounds on semi-major issues and even someday on minor repairs like windshields. I think Tesla is basically going to pull off a move that will have taken them from some of the worst service experience you can have owning a vehicle to the best experience you can have when it comes to service. By the way, to those people that say that Tesla vehicles are affordable enough already, how come Toyota's average selling price is about 50% of what Tesla's average selling price is? I see sometimes people comparing, for example, Tesla's average price and they're saying, well, that's basically within the average selling price of a US vehicle, but they fail to take into 
into consideration that an average vehicle that is sold in the US is going to be quite a bit bigger than an average Tesla. So that comparison is not actually really that good. Tesla is clearly aiming to be a mass market brand like Toyota. So I think Toyota is a good company to compare Tesla with. And clearly there's still a lot of room left for making progress when it comes to affordability. But we have made a lot of progress. In 2023, the average selling price was $51,000 and now it's $44,000. In the long term, expect the average selling price eventually to go down and be close to that of Toyota's. Also, when it comes to Cybertruck, today, a lot of bears are calling the Cybertruck a flop. Um, Yeah, so uh, Rivian makes popular pickup trucks and uh, hmm, I guess not popular enough to outsell the Cybertruck. Remember some of the vehicles that were called Tesla killers, like the Ford Mustang mach -E? Well, the Tesla Model Y is outselling it 8 to 1. Tesla is outselling this Tesla killer 13.1 to 1. The Polestar 2 is outsold by 37.3 to 1 in the US by the Model 3. Oh, and people are not that interested in the Porsche Taycan anymore. The Model S is outselling the Taycan by 6.1 to 1. So Tesla's models outsold significantly all other models in their respective vehicle category with one exception. Rivian, specifically the R1S, sold 24% more than the Tesla Model X. But I think the these two have somewhat different use cases. The Model X, if you have the third row and you have people on every single seat, you basically have nowhere to put your luggage. Although if you take this bottom thing, you can actually fit large luggages in the Model X. It's just not, it's just a bit more difficult because the Rivian is so much more boxy. You just throw it in and it it's gonna fit. And the doors, I think then it comes to practicality, I have found it to not be as practical. But a shadow goes to Rivian for doing a good job with this particular vehicle compared to the Model X. Anyway, speaking of Tesla killers, this Nissan Leaf which was redesigned. <laughs> that vehicle has been acquitted of all charges. Here's a Nissan Leaf with less than 500 miles. And yeah, unfortunately, there's a problem here. I think more serious competitors to Tesla are BYD Seal, that's specifically to the Model 3 and the Xiaomi SU7. The SU7 is still pretty new, so we will see only in a few months really how it's doing. We have news here. The Hyundai is trying to dismantle and analyze Tesla's Sabo truck. They actually did it at the end of last month. Alex just explained the situation in Germany for Tesla, more than 60% of all new vehicles in Germany are sold to fleet managers mostly as company cars. Those cars go after one to two years into private hands for lower costs and build the backbone for many brands. Of the approximately 170,000 Tesla vehicles in Germany, only around a third are registered to companies, reports the Center Automotive Research. This could be mainly due to the unattractive conditions that Tesla offers its corporate customers or to service-related complaints. Tesla is therefore significantly underrepresented in this segment, which could presumably also be due to low or no discounts for company cars. While German customers love their Tesla, I keep getting news of disgruntled Germans who are forced into a Volkswagen BEV or other brand with poor efficiency and inferior software. Companies are unfortunately often against Tesla in their vehicle fleet, whether for ideological, political, or economic reasons. Tesla is number one in customer satisfaction of all brands in Austria, Switzerland, and Germany, but the companies refuse to give their employees a Tesla. It is long overdue to change this, and we can only hope that Tesla is working on it. Tesla may want to have a specific strategy for Germany. Waymo is making progress here. Waymo is starting driverless on highways with employees in San Francisco, which will make it much easier to get around the city. For example, basically to the same destination, you can now get to that place in 20 minutes instead of 40 minutes. That's it for this video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. By joining Patreon, you will have access to all of my exclusive videos on Patreon, as well as how much I am willing to pay for each Tesla share between 2024 and 2033. If you join the investor tier, you will also have access to my valuation model, where you will see all of my assumptions, including deliveries, the energy business, Tesla's future businesses like FSD, and of course, much more. And then if you want to easily download that and put in your own numbers, then this third tier is for you. To all of my Patreon supporters, Thank you so much. Make sure to like the video and subscribe if you haven't yet as well. It's really important to like the videos because that makes it less likely that the channel 
will be shadow banned later like my other big uh, channel got shadow banned before from about 50% of my regular viewers. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.